All right, so welcome to our webinar today on how to use ChatGPT to automate your work. We have previously gone over this topic and we gave a brief overview of how ChatGPT is capable of helping you in your work life, but we saw that many people requested some more specific examples, some more use cases that can be utilized by people in order to help them work. So. My name is Santiago Wadai. I am the senior content creator here at DoorLoop. I am an FIU graduate in computer science and I essentially love all things tech. So the agenda for today, the presentation is going to be relatively short, but most of it is going to be concentrated on the real life examples. I'm going to be showing you of how to use ChatGPT and doing it along with you so you guys can follow along. So the first thing that we're going to do is give another brief overview of ChatGPT for those who missed the last webinar. And then we're going to give three separate examples of using ChatGPT. The first of which is how to write content with it, specifically a tenant welcome letter, since many of you are probably in the real estate sector and are more interested in that kind of content. The second example is going to be using Zapier to automate that process and making it an even faster thing to do and saving you even more time. And the third example, and the most complicated one, is going to be an example of how to use the OpenAI API. All right, so what is ChatGPT? Most of you probably already know what ChatGPT is, has been taking over the media and the tech world in the past few months. But basically, ChatGPT is a text-based conversational agent, which is meant to understand the prompt sites given and generate responses to those prompts as accurately as possible. One of the cool things about ChatGPT is that it learns. It has a continuously learning capabilities which means that you can essentially teach it what you need and then it can evolve to fit the data that you are giving it so three use cases for ChatGPT, which we're going to be going over here in this webinar is how to write content how to integrate ChatGPT with zapier and how to set up a program to use the open ai api in order to create your own custom applications that don't necessarily use zapier or the online ChatGPT ui so for the first example, we're going to be writing content with ChatGPT. And specifically, we're going to see how it can help you save time by writing a tenant welcome letter. So, yeah. so here I have a ChatGPT, which you can go to by going to chat.openai.com, creating an account and going, it will take you to this screen where you are prompted with an input. And this is basically where you put the instructions for the model. And we're interested in it creating us a tenant welcome letter. And in order for it to create a good tenant welcome letter, we need to give it information about the tenant, information about ourselves, and information about what we want to include in the letter overall. So the first thing that we want to do in creating any prompt is give ChatGPT an occupation, essentially give it a purpose. So for this example, we're going to pretend that ChatGPT is a property manager. So I want you to pretend that you are a, we could put expert property manager. So now it knows that we're talking about property management and everything is going to be put in the tone of a property manager. And then you're going to put what you're going to be doing today. I am welcoming a tenant to my property management company. And then we want to start giving it information. We're going to call it Miami properties. And then we need to say what we want ChatGPT to do specifically. So we could put, I write tenant welcome letters to every tenant that, tenant that I onboard to the company. So now it knows that's going to be writing a tenant welcome letter. So now we need to give it some information. So the tenant's name is Jack Stone. The tenant is moving to a condo located at 12345 Southwest Washington Street in Miami, Florida. Then we want to put Maybe if we want to personalize it, if we want to add a certain tone or language or style to the letter, but we just want a generic one for this example. So we can put, make sure to include everything that would typically 
be included in a tenant welcome letter. Remember that it has been it has been trained on millions or billions of lines of words and sentences, so it already knows what a tenant welcome letter is and what it consists of. So you don't have to be very specific in what you want it to include because it already has an idea of what to include. And then lastly, we always want the tenant welcome letter to include our own contact information. That way the tenant can contact us with any questions or concerns. So you can put make sure to include my contact information. And then we'll put email, let's put miami at gorilloop.com. And then we can put a phone number, which will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And then lastly, we can put name, and let's put my name. And we can hit enter. And once you press enter, it's going to type out for a little while and it's going to type out the response to what you just gave it. So you see there that it's asking for the date. If we would have given it the date, then it would have been able to put that input, but we didn't give it the date. So here it goes. As you can see, it's quickly writing the tenant welcome letter and just a matter of seconds, it's already written this whole entire letter and that it sounds just like a normal tenant welcome letter. It gives all the information that is required. It gives, you see, my contact information is there. It's up here in the header as well, just like a normal letter. It's addressing the tenant and it's welcoming the tenant to the property, to the property management company. So there it is, there's my name again, a footer just like in a regular letter. So as you can see, and just by creating this prompt in just a minute or two, it took maybe maximum 15 seconds to write out this whole entire letter. And you can take this however you please. You can copy this and use that as a template and use that template for all of your tenants. Or you can just copy and paste this prompt and then change the tenant information and it'll write a personalized letter every single time. That is one of the other capabilities of ChatGPT that makes it so incredible is that it will change it every single time. You can actually prove that by clicking regenerate response and it's gonna change it completely. It's gonna be different wording, but same purpose and same message, which can be useful if you like to send personalized letters to tenants. You can even include some extra details here, mentioning maybe if the tenant has a boat, that you can say information about the dock or the marina or anything like that around the property. Basically, anything that you can think of can be included in the prompt and it will be incorporated into the letter in a unique way because ChatGPT's prompts are always unique. You will almost never get two identical responses from ChatGPT. So that is our example on how to create content in the form of a tenant welcome letter. So let's move on. For our second example, we want to integrate ChatGPT with Zapier. For those who don't know what Zapier is, Zapier is a very large and popular automation platform that helps to connect two different applications or more than two applications to create automations between those and integrations with those very easily. So now let's integrate ChatGPT with Zapier and automate the sending of the tenant welcome letters. So here we have a sample Zapier integration. And the way that I'm doing it here, just as an example, is with a Google Sheet. In this Google Sheet, I have the name, address, city, and state of the tenant. Now, obviously, this might not be how you have it set up, but this is just an example and it's to show the capabilities of how Zapier can work with JGPT. So back to Zapier, you can put the trigger as a new spreadsheet row in Google Sheets. That means that every single time a new tenant is added to this sheet, this is going to trigger and it's going to go into here. This is the important one because this is where we're going to be putting the prompt for ChatGPT. So we can go here and copy the same exact prompt because we're doing the same thing and put it here into Zapier. Now, the important part and the cool part about using Zapier for this is that you, the information of the tenant is not static. So here, the tenant's name is Jack Stone. The tenant's name is actually coming from the Google Sheet. So it's going to be personalized every single time a new tenant is added to that Google Sheet. 
the tenant is moving to a let's put property located at and then here since we already have the address in the Google Sheet we can just add it here and it's going to dynamically change the prompt every single time and we have the city and the state so we can put city comma state then everything else stays the same because my information has stayed the same. Now, again, you can add more information to this prompt. The more information, the better the output and the more catered to your purpose it will be. But this is, again, just a bare bones example of automating the process. So the rest of the options you can essentially keep the same. The temperature is the only one that may matter a little bit. If you want them to be more personalized, then you will put higher values like it says here, like 0 0.8. But if you want it to be more static and more similar to each other, then you can put lower values, which means lower randomness, essentially. So we can put continue, and we can even test it here. So let's give it a second, and it should reply with the whole entire response. So as you see here, that took maybe another couple of seconds, but you see that the response, it was here, content, dear Mo. And it says all of the same things that was in this one, but now it's in Zapier. And why is it important that it's in Zapier? Because from there, you can add another step. Maybe you wanna email it to them. Maybe it's not a letter, but it's an email. So you can put here to choose an event and you can put to send an email. And you wanna send that email to the tenant. And then if here, you can put a field that says to include their email. And once they include their email, you can easily automate the process of getting the information from the Google Sheet, creating the conversation in ChatGPT and allowing it to create the response, and then emailing it to the tenant right here all in one place. So that was our example on how to use Zapier and ChatGPT to collect tenants' information, create a tenant welcome letter for that specific tenant, and send them the tenant welcome letter through Gmail all automatically in a couple of seconds with this integration. Now, do keep in mind that Zapier is a paid service, so this integration will not be free, but in the interest of your business and saving time, it could be worth as a business expense. And in addition, we want to make clear that we're not affiliated with Zapier in any way. We just thought that it's the most powerful tool for creating these automations and integrations and figured that we'd share the example with you guys. That way you guys can also make these automations yourself. So now that we've covered those two examples of how ChatGPT can, and Zapier can help automate your work, now let's get into the more technical example, which is how to use the OpenAI API. Now, please note that this solution is more complicated and requires more knowledge of programming languages and APIs in order to do it successfully. So if you're not familiar with it, we would recommend contacting a developer or an IT person in order for them to delve into it and see how the custom solution can be created. So for the sake of this example, we're going to be using a very simple JavaScript program that does a simple call to the OpenAI API and just gets a response from it. So here we can see a snippet of JavaScript code. And essentially what this code is doing is downloading and installing the OpenAI packages and also generating a prompt for ChatGPT and sending it to OpenAPI and waiting for a response. Now, as you can see here, you do need an API key from OpenAI, which is a paid service. But if you are just creating your account today, they do offer a free trial and you will be able to play around with this for a while in order to get familiar with it before putting a payment method and starting to pay for the API key. So as we see here, we're using the model TextDaVinci003, which is right now one of the models that ChatGPT uses to create the responses. And we see here the prompt which says, what are the most common payment options for paying rent? And we want it to simulate a real estate chatbot. So while this seems redundant now, and it doesn't seem like it makes sense, the point of this in a custom application would be that the application will be trained, the model will be trained with your business's information, and then the tenants will be able to submit this prompt, and the real estate chatbot will give an answer. Now, in order to train models like ChatGPT, you can use third-party software that do it for you and allow you to submit 
things like documentation, articles, documents in order to train the model on your specific business. And then you can use that to create the chatbot similar to this using the OpenAI API. But for this example, we're going to pretend like a tenant is asking about the most common payment options for paying rent. And then we're going to see what the real estate chatbot replies. Now, remember that a chatbot, we don't want it to reply with a very long response. Our point is to for customer satisfaction. We want to answer the tenant's question and we want to make sure that it's accurate and that it's not too long because the tenant just wants to know the answer and doesn't want to know anything else. So we can run the file here and we can wait for the reply for you probably take a couple seconds. Here it is. So the most common payment options for paying rent are cash, check, money order, and electronic payments, which a lot of property managers accept. So the answer makes sense. And now some of these other ones may seem unfamiliar. Uh, the max tokens is essentially going to be how much you're willing to spend on each prompt. Remember that since the API is a paid service, each call to the, a to the API is going to cost just a couple of hundredths of a cent. But if you do it over thousands and thousands of times, it will add up. So you want to have a maximum amount that you're willing to spend. And those are called tokens. And tokens are essentially the length of the response that you're going to be getting. So the maximum length here is approximately 150. And again, the temperature is how random you want the response to be. This is a chatbot. We want to answer tenants' questions concisely and accurately. So we put it at zero. We want it just to include the answer, and that's about it. We don't want it to elaborate at all. So then we are simply getting the response and printing it to here. Now, obviously, ideally, in a custom solution, you would use this and you would send the tenant the answer, and the tenant will be able to ask multiple questions, and the real estate chatbot would be able to answer all of these questions after it has been trained in the business information. As a property manager or a landlord, you can also use this to your own advantage to maybe onboard property owners to your property management system. Maybe the property owners have questions about the property management company. The possibilities are absolutely endless. But again, it will require training of the model and it does require technological knowledge of the programming language and APIs. So that concludes our three examples of how ChatGPT can help you in your daily work life by saving you time and automating some of your work. Note that ChatGPT right now is an extremely powerful tool and it can be used for something as simple as creating a letter to something as complicated as creating your own custom chatbot or analyzing large sets of data that you might have. And of course, remember that this field is continuously evolving at such a quick rate that maybe what we saw today wouldn't be relevant in a year or two years or five years. Since ChatGPT only came out just a couple months ago, it is still being, hasn't even been used to its full potential and people are still discovering ways to use it and ways to implement it into their own daily lives. And with that said, we want to know if you guys have any suggestions for any future webinars, whether they be about ChatGPT or anything real estate related. We want to know what you guys want to watch and listen to and what you guys will be interested in. And with that, I want to thank you guys for being here with me for this presentation. I really appreciate you guys sticking through until the end. And if you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the chat and we'll be monitoring the chat to answer any questions right now.